Gemini 3 was just released and there's no shortage of people hyping it up. The most powerful LLM ever, best model ever made, a new era of intelligence. But is that the case? In this video, I'll share with you everything you need to know about Gemini 3, why benchmarks are meaningless, and how Google went from being the biggest joke in AI, in my opinion, to the biggest player. Watch until the end to see what the impact of this release is on the industry. So let's dive in. Google's AI comeback story is crazy. Firstly, let's be real. Three years ago, before ChatGPT became viral, Google was the undisputed king of AI. They had PageRank, their AI-based search engine, I don't need to tell you what that is. They bought DeepMind in 2014. They created AlphaGo, which beat the World Go champion, taking reinforcement learning to another level. Then, in 2017, Google researchers invented the transformer architecture, literally everything that powers all of the frontier models today. Inside Google, there were stories we don't even know about. In 2021, they invented Lambda, a conversational model similar to ChatGPT that was so good that an engineer thought it was sentient and had a soul, and he got fired for that. So they had GPT-3 level stuff just sitting in labs that we never knew about. All of that changed in November 30, 2022, and you guessed it, OpenAI drops ChatGPT on the world. Sundar Pichai and Google execs had a full-blown code red. Larry Page and Sergey Bin came out of retirement for emergency meetings. ChatGPT was the first legitimate threat to Google search because 80% of Google's revenue still comes from search-based advertising. So what do they do to fix that? They ship BARD. Remember BARD? In its very first public demo, BARD said that James Webb Space Telescope took the first picture of an exoplanet, when in reality, the first exoplanet image was taken in 2004. So their stock dropped 8% in one day and, hey Google, what's an exoplanet, became a meme. December 2023 came in, they finally dropped Gemini 1 and they rebranded it from BARD to Gemini. They still couldn't catch a break. Because when people ask it to generate images of US founding fathers, as an example, they made them all women of color, which is obviously not true. So it was roasted for being quote unquote woke. And they actually had to pause image generation after that. The real comeback was Gemini 2 and 2.5, which was excellent at code generation and later on image generation with Nano Banana. And now Gemini 3. Looking back, it's crazy to see how far Google has gone since their downfall in generative AI. So what's so different about Gemini 3 Pro and why is everyone going crazy? Let me give you the gist of it. Gemini 3 Pro is a gigantic model. Google still hasn't given an official parameter count, which is classic Google secrecy, but people estimate it is north of 1.5 trillion parameters. It has 1 million token context window with 2 million probably coming soon. There are three main features. Number one is Gemini 3 DeepThink which is an enhanced reasoning mode only available to safety testers for now and will be rolled out soon. It will be available on a 250 per month dollar plan. Number two is Gemini Agent, which allows you to build slide decks, book things online, organize your inbox, etc., etc. And last but not least, they released Google Anti-Gravity, which is a vibe coding platform competing with Cursor. Yes, it is a VS Code fork as well, supporting all models, including Gemini. People are losing their mind over the new benchmark numbers. But here's why I don't trust benchmarks. Firstly, a lot of people don't even know what a benchmark is. A benchmark is literally a fixed set of exam questions that someone made up to test how smart an AI system is. Literally, that's all it is. Here are some examples. Here are 50 super hard math problems. How can you solve them correctly? Here are 1000 science questions that PhD students get wrong sometimes. What's your score? Here's a coding problem. Write working code for it. Look at this picture. Tell me what's in it. They run the AI on these questions, count how many they get right, give it a percentage, and put it on leaderboard. Now, as the saying goes, if the benchmark is public and lives on the internet, it's meaningless. Because teams will literally game their models to try and beat these benchmarks as much as they can. All of the frontier labs do this, and nobody has the discipline to not do it. Because if they don't, they risk falling down in the leaderboard, and no one will trust them. That's why I only care about what the actual builders are saying after using it for a couple of days and, more importantly, for a couple of months because there's been many incidents where AI models get quote-unquote dumber with time. I'll cover this off in another video. But I don't just care about the pretty charts on release day. However, with that said, so far the reactions were great and I tried it myself extensively and it's a really, really good model. That's not to say that all benchmarks are meaningless. I think they are still valuable, and it's at least the best thing we could do now to compare all of the frontier models. So let me go through them very quickly. Number one is humanity's last exam. 
This is a set of 2,500 insanely hard PhD level questions across every field from math, physics, biology, etc. Gemini 3 Pro leaps all of the others. Number two is GPQA Diamond, which is a set of 200 plus graduate level science questions in physics, chemistry, biology, written by actual PhDs. Again, Gemini 3 Pro is the winner. Number three is ARC AGI 1 2, which is not about knowledge, but about actual visual pattern reasoning on grids. So, it's basically the closest thing to, do you actually think or just memorize the internet? This is one of the most important benchmarks out there. And last but not least, vending bench to benchmark. This is when the AI has to act like a real vending machine, like figuring out what snack falls, if it gets stuck, how much change you get back. LLMs are bad at these things because they never felt the real world and it is super hard to cheat because every scenario is randomly generated. This is one of the most underrated benchmarks out there and is 100% worth looking into. It measures how AI run autonomously, basically. And again, Gemini 3 Pro leapsfrog every other model out there. Now, everyone talks about benchmarks, but here's what no one talks about. Safety reports. The powerful thing about Gemini 3 Pro is that it did not hit any of their holy shit, this is dangerous threshold. Not in bioweapons, persuasion, and many others. It is a very safe model. However, it's getting scary good at hacking. It's very good at cybersecurity, but also makes it good at hacking. So what does that mean for Google? Google has a massive advantage in the AI race. Firstly, here's what most people are not talking about. Google used their own custom AI chips called Tensor Processing Unit TPUs to train Gemini 3. And a lot of people don't know that Google hasn't given a single dollar to NVIDIA for training their AI models. NVIDIA were just too slow and expensive for the amount of AI training Google was doing. So they just invented their own AI chips. Because they make their own chips, they can control margins and offer cheaper models. This is why Gemini 3 is gigantic, fast, and relatively cheap. They aren't paying the NVIDIA markup. Also, Google owns the data game. They have Google search, literally every single question humanity ever asked, YouTube, which is every video, every comment, every frame, they've got Gmail, they've got Google Maps, and they've got Android, and many others. OpenAI has Reddit and some books, Meta has Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, but not anywhere close to Google. Don't get me wrong, I am a big believer in OpenAI, and I don't think there is any business out there that is executing as well as they do. Let's get real. Everything they released has been spot on from the moment ChatGPT was first released. Even their products are spotless. Yes, they are losing money, but they are playing the long game. So where do you go from here? Number one, the scaling war will continue. For the last two years, people kept saying scaling is dead. We hit diminishing returns. Google came in and said, LOL, no. Number two, OpenAI and Anthropic have four to eight weeks to answer. Perception is literally 80% of the game and they need to ship something big before the end of the year. And number three, Gemini 3 is great, but it's not a huge leap in intelligence. We never had something as big as the leap when ChatGPT was first launched. So until we get an entirely new architecture, we will continue to only see incremental improvements. So irrespective of all of the hype out there, this is an incredible model, but it's still not the leap that we are all expecting.